bishop asked me to speak today, I was like, oh, no problem. It's not awkward, no stress. I lied. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you have to minister to God's people, you need to be still so that you can hear and you're not just giving your opinion or what you think the people need or want to hear. And sometimes it's a good word. It's a feel good word. Sometimes it's like, ouch. You know, sometimes like you can tell when God is speaking. So I asked the Lord, what have you, what would you have me say? And he had me go back a year of what he's been saying this whole time to us. And each message, because I take notes. I don't know if y'all know, but I take notes during the service. And I went back and I read them, and the theme was always about the heart. Matters of the heart. And I said, well, we talked about that. He said, and you will continue to talk about that. And I said, okay, well, we're gonna talk about that again. And I said, Lord, he had me go back, like I said, and about a year ago, Bishop Smith gave a message called The Day. I don't know if y'all remember that. And he said how we should stay on the cross and not come down and allow it to do what it needs to do and not be comfortable. He said that the flesh never commits suicide. We have to kill it. And a couple of Sundays after that, Pastor Reeves ministered about Pentecost. And we're entering into that season. We're entering into the day of Pentecost. And he talked about how the church was more than a building, how we are an airport, how the Holy Spirit comes with power. Now, if you're not afraid to fly, how many people have been to the airport and gotten on the plane? Amen. Right? And when you go to the airport, you better be there on time or they're going to shut the doors and you can't get on that flight. So when you come to the airport here and the Lord starts to move, which is the airplane, the Holy Spirit starts to take off and you don't get on that plane, then you're going to be sitting there looking out the window, talking about, I wish I was on that flight. Then you have to wait till the airport opens again to go back and catch another flight. Whew. So, a little after that, Minister Lewis ministered that a storm is coming. He said, take heed, do not be deceived, to keep watch because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. Then Pastor Reed ministered again about trash or treasure. And how the trash takes everything. It doesn't matter. Fire burns up trash, but fire also purifies. Then Bishop came a little later and ministered that just hearing does not make or does not is not an element of faith. So just coming to hear does not mean that you have faith. He, our, our theme Scripture for a while, and still is, is James 1.22, which says, So let's fast forward to the beginning of this year. The Lord's still dealing with our hearts. Now we got all that. I looked at my notes. I said, we're getting some good word. We're getting some good teaching. It's not milk. It's not milk. It's eat. It's meat, something for us to chew, to digest, as the cows do. You might need to regurgitate it and chew it again so it can go down, correct? So you can understand what the Lord is saying. So Bishop Parham gave us an offensive scripture in James 22, and out of the defensive scripture, he gave Matthew 13, 19. And he summed it up in this way, no matter what you are reading, the enemy comes to snatch what is sown in you. 
The minute you hear it, the enemy is going to try to steal it, even while you're sitting right here. Because don't think he doesn't know what he can do to distract you. We just learned today he uses the phone. Yeah. Hmm. So we use our phone for our Bibles, but if you don't have it done right, while you're even reading your Bible, something will pop up on your phone, whether it's a text, a call, or something. So he will steal it while you're sitting in here using the electronic devices. This is why Bishop loves the Bible, the bound Bible. Back in the day, you couldn't get distracted when you had that. I mean, you could, but you really couldn't, okay? So why the recap? The Lord says, I'm building my temple. And he's not just talking about brick and mortar. He's talking about your heart. Your heart is a temple where he dwells, where he should dwell. That's what he said he's building. And it was declared that we were an apostolic center. And to build the temple where the Lord dwells takes discipline, it takes discipline, dedication, and commitment. Right? So if we go into a building or these homes that they build, you can tell, you can, they just threw that up there. They didn't take time with that. You go in the house, you see imperfections and all of those things. Well, Lord doesn't, the Lord doesn't build like that. He's a perfect God, and he wants to do perfection in you through him. That's what the word says. So if you please stand, we're going to read 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 55 through 61. Okay, so let's start reading together. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice saying, Praise be to the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not word fair, felt all good promises, excuse me, servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him to walk in obedience to him and keep the commands, decrees, and laws he gave our ancestors. And may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands at this time. Thank you, Lord. You can have a seat. I'm focusing on verse 61, where it says, may your hearts follow. So I'm taking School of Wisdom class, and I've learned that when we're talking about scripture and interpreting scripture, the first thing we need to know the original context of the scripture. And the context was set, uh, Solomon was praying before God for his people. This is what he was there kneeling and praying, interceding for his people, wanting God to come in because he was building the temple because the ark was coming. And the ark represented the presence of God, and he didn't want that thing half done. He didn't want imperfections. So he prayed for the people as he was building the temple because he knew, again, the ark was coming. Then after he was praying, he stood up and he stretched his hand over the people, and he prayed these prayers. And the last thing that he said was, and may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time. See, Solomon, if I had, to, if I was there, but I wasn't, um, I could imagine those people had problems. 
They had to build the temple, but they still had problems. They probably had stress. We just talked about stress. They probably were worrying about loved ones. They probably had their own individual concerns, distractions, which may have taken them, uh, which the distractions may have caused them not to be committed or dedicated to building the temple. Solomon was like, this is what we're going to do, and this is my prayer. Building anything takes strength. It takes courage, fortitude, dedication, commitment, and going through something really is a hard issue. Trials and tribulations, offenses, um, hurts, disappointments, and how we cope with them, it all flows through your heart. Deacon Ron stood up here a couple of weeks ago, talked about the heart does things, good or bad. When you know you've done something wrong, your heart just, there's this heart like, now you know you're about to get caught. <laughs> or when something good happens, it still beats. The Holy Spirit, that, if y'all really want to know, that's what that's all about. The hardness, when you do something wrong, that's the Holy Spirit saying, you shouldn't have done that. And when it goes, you know, when it flutters, you're like, that's the peace, that's the joy. We say we got joy in our heart, but do we really? When times get hard, do we pull on that joy? Or do we lean into our own understanding and look at the situation and not keeping our eyes on the Lord? When we deprive our heart of oxygen and nutrients, excuse me, and we fill it with things of this world that satisfies our flesh, whether it's fast food, too much of it, whether it's drinking, too much of it, whether it's nicotine, whether it's gossip, whether it's unforgiveness, what goes in the heart goes out. So the heart is a well-oiled machine. Whatever you put in, it's going to come out. Right. And the word, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're filling your mouth with junk, whether it's what you read, whether it's what you listen to, whether it's what you see, your mouth is going to speak that. The Lord says, I'm dealing with with the heart. It's not, a, it's not a condemnation kind of message, thank you, Lord, that he's saying is to encourage you. He says, I am still on the throne. No matter what your children are doing, no matter what the landlord says, no matter what your bank account says, no matter what your employer says, I am still on the throne. He says, many of us have taken our eyes off of him and become distracted. This is where the stress comes in. This is where the confusion comes in. Well, do I listen? Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Let's say, what does the Lord say? Be still. I promise you, I promise you, he will answer. It may not be what you want. It may not be when you think it's going to come, but it comes. And I can all give this testimony. Usually it comes quicker than you think, but we miss it because our eyes are not on him. We doing this. Whatever. So, oh, she went through that. Oh, I must begin right. Go through that. Oh, she got five likes. I didn't get none. I'm doing something wrong. The Lord says, turn. That's what the scripture says. My people who are called by my name. Do what? Humble themselves. And do what? It doesn't mean you go the way the world goes, the way the world sees. If we're the ecclesia, if we are the called out ones, we are to do differently. 
We should not follow what the world follows. We should not say what the world says. We should not do what the world does. We are called out to be a peculiar person, set apart and holy for God. And we wonder why. Well, why is all this? Well, where's the church? What, what we doing? Now, don't get me wrong. This is not a, we got to keep, we have been. But God is pushing us. He's pushing us. This is going through the fire. Uh-huh. The refiner's fire. Do you know what that is? That means the heat is hot. It's burning off impurities, things that we don't even know. We're like, I ain't know I had that problem. The Lord did. Yeah. And you wonder why people talk to you the way they do. Well, how do you talk to people? You reap what you sow. Well, she rolled her eyes. Well, do you roll your eyes? There's unforgiveness. I don't care. And that's it. I had to minister at my cousin's home going service yesterday. And what the Lord said was, it doesn't matter if it happened in 1955, 65, 75, 85, 95, 2005, five minutes ago, let it go. It is causing undue stress. That, and you're picking up something that he did not cause you to carry. See, when you're on the cross, you can't hold anything. What can you hold if you stretched out? You can't hold nothing. The Lord's saying, let it go. This is what he meant when he says, stay on the cross. Let us have his perfect work in you. Then people will be able to see the glory of the Lord. Not you, not what you did, but what did God do? Thank you, Lord. Jesus, my Lord. Second Corinthians 4, 16, and I'm almost done. Yes, this is a quick one. The Lord says, therefore, do not lose heart, though outward, we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Everything that we're going through is temporal. We make it permanent because we need to renew our mind. We need, to, we need to repent and turn from that thing that got us distracted. My God. So fix our eyes on, excuse me, so fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. When that day comes and we all going to be there, when we up here and everybody's coming to say their goodbyes, that's eternal. We're not worried about what was going on. Even while, we, while we're here, we're with the Lord. Three days before my cousin passed, they said, he said, I need to turn my life around. I need to make some changes. Three days. That third day, he passed away. Don't waste time. That's the only thing you can't get back. We never know. God is saying, turn your heart towards me. Drop the offenses. And we say we don't have offenses, but if you're honest with yourself... You got offenses. If you, did, if you didn't have offenses, when we came in here, nobody would have to pump you up for praise and worship. If you didn't have offenses and carrying burdens, you would come in here leaping, as, a, as the scripture says, leaping like the deer. Like the, you would be jumping and shouting for joy because that's what's in your heart. 
So remember, when you come into the airport, you got your carry-on. Don't have a carry-on in this airport. There's no carry-ons. You're just going to get on and take off with the Holy Spirit. You have to leave what's behind at the terminal. It's funny that that word is called terminal. I just thought about that. Terminal, that means leave it. It's there. You can't take it with you. Hallelujah. So I think that is uh, it. But I do want to say just be of good cheer. Because the Lord is with us. He will not leave us nor forsake us. We need to continue to build his temple here and here. Because the Bible says if he be lifted up, he will draw. The only way they're gonna, we're going to draw is through our mouth, which means what's in our heart has to come out, which is his love. Amen.